Hells Angels Motorcycle Club has not been found by a jury in the state of Nevada to be a criminal gang. Are you prepared to witness the mind-blowing courtroom moments that have unfolded within the hallowed halls of justice? Get ready for the wildest roller coaster ride as we delve into the shocking reactions of five Hells Angels members. <laughs> facing life sentences. Welcome to the most astonishing courtroom moments of all time. One, Jonathan Nelson's case. Our first case revolves around Jonathan Nelson, also known as Jody Nelson, a former member of the notorious Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Nelson's life took a dark turn when he faced trial for first-degree murder, with an additional charge of extreme atrocity and cruelty. The jury's verdict left him facing a life sentence. Let's dive into the details and see how Jonathan Nelson and his family reacted to the devastating outcome. Jonathan Nelson, once a prominent member of the Hells Angels, found himself in a courtroom awaiting the jury's decision. The verdict came in, and the jury unanimously found him guilty of first-degree murder, a charge that carried a sentence of life in prison. The jury further deemed the murder to be based on a theory of extreme atrocity and cruelty, highlighting the severity of the crime. Jonathan Nelson's sentencing was a moment of great emotional intensity. In the courtroom, his family and friends gathered, providing support during this difficult time. Nelson's father, Dwayne Nelson, his brother Lance, and his ex-wife, Hillary Nelson, all appealed to Judge Sam Cummings for compassion. Jonathan Nelson was sentenced to 300 months in jail, equivalent to 25 years. In addition to the lengthy imprisonment, he was also ordered to serve three years of probation and pay a substantial fine of $200,000. The courtroom was filled with a sense of sorrow and tension as Jonathan Nelson's fate was sealed. The once head of an elite chapter of the Hells Angels had now been sentenced to spend the rest of his life behind bars. It serves as a reminder of the drastic consequences that come with being involved in such criminal activities. 2. Morris Mom Boucher in our next case, we delve into the story of Morris Mom Boucher, a prominent figure within the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Boucher, already serving three life terms for previous crimes, faced an additional sentence of 10 years for his involvement in a high-profile murder case. Let's uncover how Boucher reacted to the sentencing and the court's remarks. Morris Mom Boucher, known for his ruthless reputation as the head of an elite chapter of the Hells Angels, found himself in a Montreal courtroom awaiting his fate. The verdict came in, and Superior Court Justice Eric Downs sentenced Boucher to an additional 10 years in prison for his participation in the murder of Reynaud Desjardins, a key player in the Montreal Mafia. The sentencing hearing provided a glimpse into Boucher's state of mind as he faced the consequences of his actions. When Justice Downs asked if he had anything to say before being formally sentenced, Boucher responded with a simple statement, everything is fine. It was a stoic response, leaving many in the courtroom pondering his demeanor. During the proceedings, Justice Downs chastised Boucher for his manipulative actions while incarcerated. The judge's remark served as a reminder of the extent to which Boucher had gone to maintain his criminal influence, even from behind bars. Boucher's involvement in the murder of Reynaud Desjardins was a chilling reminder of the violence that can arise from organized crime. The additional 10-year sentence, when added to his existing life terms, solidified his fate as a prisoner for the rest of his life. It illustrates the justice system's commitment to holding individuals accountable for their actions and preventing further harm to society. 3. Emery Martin, a.k.a. Pitt Martin in our next case, we explore the story of Emery Martin, also known as Pitt Martin, a lifelong member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Martin faced charges related to cocaine trafficking and operating within a criminal organization. Let's delve into the details of his case, the sentence he received, and the unique circumstances surrounding his time in confinement. Emery Martin, a 61-year-old man from St. Anne de Madawaska, found himself facing serious charges related to the illicit drug trade. Recognized by the RCMP as a lifelong member of the Hells Angels, Martin was infamous for his involvement in smuggling narcotics into the province from Quebec. 
Martin's case garnered significant attention, with both the prosecution and defense seeking an eight-year jail term. However, the final decision was left in the hands of Judge Denise LeBlanc, who considered various factors before pronouncing the sentence. Ultimately, Judge LeBlanc decided on a seven-and-a-half-year jail term for Martin. It's important to note that this sentence was reduced due to the time Martin had already served in prison since his arrest in 2018. According to the court's records, he had been confined in solitary confinement for long periods of time. In addition to the reduced sentence, Judge LeBlanc acknowledged the loss of Martin's right to privacy. The installation of a surveillance camera in his cell further impacted his quality of life during his confinement. These factors were taken into consideration when determining the final sentence. The court also acknowledged Martin's status as a lifelong member of the Hells Angels and his role in smuggling narcotics into the province's northern region. The RCMP believed that he was primarily responsible for facilitating the distribution of drugs in Acadian Peninsula, Restigouche, Madawaska, and Victoria counties. His sentence, along with the consideration given to his previous time served and living conditions, reflects the complexities involved in criminal prosecutions. A four, Zane Peoria Wallace. In our next case, we delve into the disturbing story of Zane Peoria Wallace, a man who faced a life sentence for the brutal murder of Jasmine Wilson. Let's uncover the details surrounding their relationship, the evidence presented during the trial, and the impact of Wallace's actions on Wilson's family. Zane Peoria Wallace, 31 years old at the time of the trial, stood before the court accused of the murder of Jasmine Wilson, a mother of two. The trial took place in Wanganui, New Zealand, and brought to light the harrowing details of their tumultuous relationship. The trial presented evidence that revealed the extent of the violence inflicted upon Jasmine Wilson during her nine-month relationship with Wallace. Witnesses testified to witnessing numerous injuries she sustained during this period. In fact, she kept a diary documenting the violence she endured. This act was witnessed by others, further substantiating the accounts of violence within their relationship. Additionally, recorded phone calls made by Wallace while serving time in prison revealed a series of threats towards Wilson, including graphic descriptions of violence. The trial provided a glimpse into the profound impact of Wallace's actions on Jasmine Wilson and her family. Detective Senior Sergeant Neil Forlong, with decades of experience, described Wilson's injuries as among the worst he had ever seen, both as an investigator and as an individual. During the trial, it also came to light that several members of Wallace's family had already been sentenced for perverting the course of justice in connection with Wilson's death. This further emphasized the extent to which the family was involved in attempting to conceal the truth surrounding the crime. The jury reached a verdict, finding Zane Peoria Wallace guilty of murder. The court sentenced him to life in prison, with a minimum term of 15 years and six months. It was a somber moment in the courtroom as Wallace's fate was sealed, but it provided some closure for Wilson's grieving family. 5. David Chaloux's Conviction in our final case, we delve into the story of David Shalou, a man convicted of three counts of first-degree murder, kidnapping, and witness intimidation. Let's uncover the intense emotions within the courtroom as the jury deliberated and the reactions of Shalou's relatives and friends to the guilty verdicts. David Shalou, a figure standing with his hands tied after the initial guilty judgment was announced, faced a moment of profound significance. The jury unanimously found him guilty of the charges, including three counts of first-degree murder. The weight of the guilty verdicts reverberated through the courtroom. Shalou, 47 years old at the time, maintained his composure, holding his head high and his mouth gritted as each of the 12 jurors declared their agreement with the judgment. His relatives and friends gathered closely together in the gallery, many of them overcome with grief, sobbing loudly. The atmosphere in the courtroom shifted when seconds after the initial guilty judgment, a female juror recanted her verdict. Three other female jurors wept at this sudden turn of events. However, the female juror in question, when pulled again, stated unequivocally that she stood by her initial guilty verdict. The jury reconvened and announced that they had gone through all the evidence once again, unanimously reaffirming their guilty findings. 
Berkshire District Attorney David F. Kaplis commended the jury for their diligent work in reaching a fair and unanimous decision. He acknowledged the concern caused by the temporary reversal of the conviction, but stated that the jury's reevaluation of the material led them to reaffirm their verdicts. David Chalou's sentencing was scheduled for a later date, allowing the court to consider the severity of his crimes and determine an appropriate punishment. The guilty verdicts, however, solidified the accountability Chalou would face for his actions. The case of David Chalou further underscores the significance of the justice system's commitment to holding individuals accountable for their crimes. It highlights the emotional toll that trials can take on all those involved, from the jurors to the family and friends of both the victim and the accused.